Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'm not gonna lie, I am not that excited to make this video. There are a lot of things about photography that I absolutely love, and storage is not really at the top of that list, but it's definitely something worth talking about, and I recently posted on my Instagram basically a couple of hard drives that I bought, and I got a lot of people asking me to just kind of walk through my workflow. I am by no means a storage or organization or backup expert at all, but today I'm gonna try and just walk you guys through exactly what I use and how I use it, and hopefully that can give you at least a little bit of clarity. And of course, take anything that I do here, modify it, basically make it work for yourself because I think everybody's needs are different and everybody's like organization methods are way different. I'm gonna try to make this as simple but thorough as possible. For starters, let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of hard drives because you have your standard hard disk drive like this and then you also have something like this which is a solid state drive. I'm not gonna go super in depth into what makes them different because one, it's a lot, and two, I am not the person to explain that. But basically all you would need to know is that these kind of drives, the hard disk drives, these are great for storage, whereas a solid state drive is really good for actually working off of this drive. So any photos, any videos, anything like that that you're currently in the editing program, whether it be Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut, Premiere Pro, any of that stuff, if your files are actually stored in this drive and you're working off of a project on this drive, that's gonna be a lot faster than something like a hard disk drive. So the way this works for me is I will edit everything off of the solid state drive and when it's done, I'll export it and make sure it's all stored and backed up on these hard disk drives. That's not to say you can't edit off of a hard disk drive, it's just that the read and write speed isn't gonna be nearly as fast as a solid state drive and typically they're a little bit bigger and bulkier and you run a little bit more of a risk with things like damage. If you drop the hard drive, it's much more likely to fail and basically just be corrupted on that kind of drive as opposed to one of these small solid state drives because there are no moving parts inside these drives. I see a lot of people take Velcro and just stick it to these SSDs and then just mount that to their computer. And that way if they're on the go, it's right there. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's super lightweight. And again, it's a little bit more versatile and rugged because you don't have to worry about dropping it or anything like that. Speaking of rugged, I have this new Armor Lock SSD from G Technology. Uh, Moment hooked me up with this thing, so I've been checking this out, and I've primarily been using these Samsung drives. Originally, I had the Samsung T5. I've got a couple of these. These are really great, but they've recently come out with the T7 drive, which is a little bit faster. Uh, I've also been really enjoying that. This drive, though, is something a little bit different, and it's pretty special. It's a two terabyte SSD, just like this Samsung T7 right here, and it's obviously a lot bigger, but you actually get a lot more features out of something like this, and it's definitely a bit more secure. With this drive, when you plug it in, it's not actually gonna mount automatically, meaning it's not gonna show up on your desktop or in your finder. You're gonna need to go into the app to manually unlock the drive, and from the app, when you're going through the setup process, you can choose exactly who has access to it. So if you're ever out traveling and you have a lot of stuff, that you really wanna keep safe, especially if you're like working with a team or you're on set and you're moving files all over the place. Losing files can be one of the most stressful things possible and this just adds another level of protection. So this thing is actually really, really nice and has kind of become my main SSD when I'm working with videos, especially with Nathan handing a drive off to him. He can take it, edit wherever he wants. All of our information and files are completely secure. I'll have links to all of these different drives in the description down below, but the Armor Lock is definitely a good option for people who want that extra security. For the hard disk drives, I've always used Western Digital drives, these My Passport drives. Um, they don't take up a lot of space. They are a little bit bigger and bulkier, but again, I'm really only using these for storage. And as a matter of fact, I always buy these in two. The reason I do that is because you wanna make sure you always have backups of your files in case anything happens to the drive, whether you lose it, whether you drop it. It's just crucial to always be backing up your files. I think I heard in a Tyler Stallman video once that Two is one and one is none, and that's kind of how you look at storage. And ever since hearing that, it just really stuck with me, and uh, I try to encourage that to people as much as possible. So I buy these two at a time, and as soon as they come in, I label them, one as the main drive, and then one as the backup drive. For backing things up, I use a program called Chronosync, which is really, really simple and honestly automates a lot of the backup process, which you can do manually. You can just, every time you add to one folder, you add to both. But I try to remove as much possibility of user error as I can because it's me. And with Chronosync, you can even program a backup. So if you wanna leave your drives plugged in and have it back up at the end of every day or one 
once a week, once a month, whatever it might be best for you. So I can plug in any pair of drives at a time and then just go over to basically my presets of all of the different backups that I have set. I select backup from left to right, basically choosing the source drive and then the backup drive and then just automate the process. It's super, super simple. There's actually a lot more you can do with that program, but that's really all I need it to do. So if you wanna learn more about it, I'm sure there are tons of videos, but that's all I use Chronosync for and it's just perfect. I'll kind of walk you guys through basically my workflow of maybe if I get back from a shoot or I download a bunch of film scans and what I do with everything. I'll plug in one of these hard disk drives and basically just make a new folder, giving it a title so I know exactly what's in there. And then inside of that, I'll add a couple more folders for the raw files, the final exports with any adjustments that I've made, and also a Lightroom catalog. I know a lot of people use just one individual Lightroom catalog with tons of different photos from different projects all in one catalog, so it's all in the same place. I like to keep things completely separate that way anytime I move a folder of raw files or the edits or anything like that, I'm also bringing along the Lightroom catalog with it so I know exactly where everything is. That might be an extra step that not many people wanna take, but for me, it just helps me kinda of keep things organized and separate. I'll import everything into that raw file folder and then from there, I'll just go ahead and make a backup onto the second drive using Chronosync. Once that's done, I'll take those files and then I'll copy it over to one of the SSD drives because that's where I'm actually gonna be working with everything. So all of those files are on three separate drives and that's before I ever format the SD card because again, during the import process or the backup process, if anything happens to those files and they become corrupted, I'm still gonna have a backup of the files on the SD card. It seems like a lot of work, but it's worth it to just take every safety precaution you can. Now, once I'm done making all of my edits on the SSD drive and everything is backed up and stored on both hard disk drives, I've already gone through the backup process, then I'll just clear everything everything off of that SSD because this isn't meant for storage. It's meant to basically hold the files as I'm working on them and then I can clear them off of the drive once they've been exported and backed up elsewhere. Now you're also gonna wanna use some sort of cloud storage as well, just as an extra safety precaution and also just for the convenience as well. There are a number of different providers of cloud storage. You've got Dropbox, Google Photos or Google Drive, iCloud. That's really gonna come down to more of a personal preference on which one to use, mostly on price and storage and UI. I typically use iCloud and Dropbox. I use them both and I don't really use these for like permanent storage of raw files or anything like that because again, I have my raw files backed up in two separate places. I keep some of those drives here, some at my house. That way, if anything were to ever happen with a fire, some kind of natural disaster, I'm not losing both drives in the same place. And the cloud storage, again, is mostly there to back up, you know, final exports, any edits that I've made to a photo, and also just stuff that I might want to use on social media. I can export it to the cloud and then just from my phone, download it to my phone, and then post it from there. And that's pretty much it. That's how I've backed up all of my photos for years. Just two duplicate drives. It makes it super easy. I think a rare system is something that I would like to get into and I've kind of been researching different things. Basically a RAID is something that's going to hold multiple drives so your duplicates are already there as soon as you import. So if one drive fails you've automatically got your backup right there. For me I think it makes a lot more sense because I'm shooting a lot of weddings, a lot of photos, a lot of client work, personal work. There are a lot of different things that I'm shooting that I need to keep backed up. I think for most people though, especially hobbyists, it's a little bit overkill. Something like this, it's more than enough. Just make sure you're always duplicating and backing up your files. If I do get into some kind of RAID system, I'll definitely make a video just to kind of show you guys what it looks like for me and how it changes from this setup, but you know, time will tell. Again, it's just really, really important that you're backing up your files. I have only had one hard drive in the last 16 years fail on me. It was a really old Western digital drive, but because I was always backing things up, I never lost any of the files. But still, every single time I import photos or I copy something over, it's just something that I can't physically see and feel and know exactly where it's at like I can with my film negatives. So just always keep this stuff secure and backed up. I hope this gave you a little bit of clarity on just my workflow and how it all works. Thank you guys for you know sticking with me for this entire video. And I also wanna take the second to thank our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Squarespace truly is the best all-in-one platform to building a website. I've been using their service for years, way before they ever sponsored my channel because they really are just that good. Literally anything you would need on your website, you can do it with Squarespace. Everything from building a portfolio, running a blog, having an online store, whether it be digital or physical products, or email newsletters like I just did with my book update. That was something entirely new to me, but it took me no time at all to get it figured out and sent out, so that was crucial. 
All of the templates are super easy to customize, so you're not just running the same exact template as everybody else. You can fully dial things in to actually fit your own style. And if you ever need help or have questions about anything, they have 24-7 award-winning customer service. If you want to try Squarespace out for your own website, you can do so entirely free at squarespace.com. But before you get signed up, make sure you go to squarespace.com slash mattday, and that'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's going to do it for today's video. Again, if you guys have any questions whatsoever about any of this stuff, the drives I've used, or any other tips or programs that you would recommend, please leave those in the comments down below. But that's it for today. Thank you guys for everything. I love you. I'll see you next time.